Friend, confidant, therapist, voyeur. As a cab driver working the Paris night shift, you are many things to different people. Your gift is getting people to talk. And in order to catch the serial killer who left you for dead, that's exactly what you'll need to do. Welcome to Night Call. This is a game that I have not booted up ever before because I'd like to experience exactly what happens from the outset with you, along with you. And if you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. And I am really excited for this game because it looks fantastic. I have no idea what to expect, but it's going to be really fun. All right, so we now get to choose an investigation. Ooh, I, I really don't know. I really don't know. Okay, so the judge. Victims have all something in common and the motives seem clear, but which suspect could have done it? Balanced case, perfect for first run. Random victims, unknown motive, weird case, slightly more difficult than the others. That is the angel of death and the sandman. The victims may feel random at first, but there's a connection. Yet the motives might be hard to find. Dark and twisted case. And then, you can also have a surprise investigation and the game will randomly pick an unsolved one. Alright, we're going to go with the judge because that is perfect, apparently, for a first run. I am now thinking to myself that I will not be able to, uh, <laughs> I will not be able to work out who done it, basically, but we'll see. Choose the difficulty mode. Okay, so money will be easy to get. The investigation will be easier. Every action will take less time for a chiller experience. Or a balanced way, you know, balanced, uh, balanced difficulty, the way Night Call was designed, or hard. The investigation will be harder to solve, every action will cost more time. I will play balanced because I'm feeling brave. <laughs> if I was feeling stupid, then I would probably play hard because I, I'm terrible at these kinds of things. But uh, I'm looking forward to it like no one's business because I think it, it just has such a cool setting. And uh, I want to, I really want to hear these people and uh, see what they have to say, hear their stories, and figure out exactly what happened. Alright, so apparently we are in a doctor's office at the moment. Here? Ah. Sir, can hear me, or do I need to speak up? Uh, I, you're fine. She takes a deep breath. Sir, you just spent two weeks in a coma. The word bounces around your head. You need a moment to understand its meaning. Coma? The word scratches along your throat. Yes, you were the victim of an assault. The word resonates in your head. Victim. You are aware a serial killer is currently on the loose in Paris. You feel the contents of your stomach crawling up your throat. The judge, as the police call the killer, assaulted you. The bullet touched your liver and in most circumstances it would have been fatal. We chose to put you in an induced... Her voice becomes more, more distant, fades. You taste bile at the back of your mouth. Your head is burning. You hear a whistle in one ear. Your fingers move to your wound. Underneath the bandages, you can feel hard skin. It is incredibly painful. Did they... I'm sorry? Did they catch the judge? No. What about my passenger? 
he was dead before you even got out of your cab. The doctor is silent for a moment, a very awkward second. She hesitates. The police would like to see you as soon as possible to ask you some questions. After all, you're the only one who survived the judge. Noise in the hallway attracts your attention. You try to turn your head, to no avail. You need to rest. She leaves the room. Her voice resonates in the hallway. I don't care. He's the only witness. He's... Another female voice joins in. A strong authoritarian voice. You can't clearly make up what she's saying. A strange feeling washes over you. It's not pain, not fatigue, some odd combination of the two. Before being in this hospital room, you'd never realize that anger was made up of a combination of pain and exhaustion. Anger, a feeling you know all too well. Days go by and a month later, Night one. Right, so what do we do? Ah, uh -huh. okay, here we go. Well, look, I've got a bit of a problem. A real problem, that is. You have a pounding headache. It's your first night behind the wheel since... Since the attack. Are you listening to me? You catch your boss's eye in the rearview mirror. Yeah. He stares at you for a second or two without speaking. Sometimes I wonder what goes on inside your head. You always seem so far away. Sorry. I just want things to get back to normal, to clear my head, to stop thinking about it all. He's watching you closely, trying to make out what's going on in your head. You know I'm worried about you, don't you? I know. You're like a son to me, you know? I know. And you know he's about to tell you the story of his taxi fleet. Again. When my father died and left me the store, I could have sold it. I could have retired, gone back to the old country. Let's let him go on. But I decided to start a cab fleet with the money he left me to hire the guys from the neighborhood. And that's why I've got 45 guys like you working for me. His hands flutter in the air. Though none of them are any match for you. He smiles. His voice suddenly takes on a serious note. Do you want me to go over everything again? He points to the equipment on the dashboard, the meter, the GPS. You haven't been in a taxi for weeks. Maybe you do need a little refresher. Yeah, good idea. Right then, well, first the map. You spot potential customers and try to guess where they'll be going. Then you decide. When a customer orders a taxi, if there's no one else around, you have to go pick them up. He shrugs. That's the way it goes. It's business. No problem. The other fares, you look at the map and decide whether or not you want to take them. And then, you drive. He flashes a quick mechanical smile. You know it well. When he talks about work, he talks about work. That's all. When your shift is over, we do the numbers and... His voice trails off, as if searching for the right words. And that's all. It's pretty simple. There's no reason why you can't do it. Oh, right. No overtime. We're in France here, and there are rules, regulations. You might not see it that way, but no one likes having a driver who hasn't slept for 24 hours. He looks away. Something's been bothering him since he got into the cab. Anyhow, you know the ropes. You get it. I know you're going to do a good job. Well, let's ask him what, what the matter is. Your boss keeps quiet for a while, as if he's hesitant to speak. And then... I don't think it's a good idea. You shouldn't be driving. The murderer is still out there and we think he's going to come back. For you. He, uh, we? Uh, he doesn't know who I am? I'll just say maybe. 
We'll, we'll play it cool, I guess. Your boss pulls himself up a little straighter. You can sense he's trying to control himself, trying not to get upset. Maybe he'd been told to go easy on you. He holds your gaze, then turns away. You know, I can put you on the day shift, or send you out to the suburbs, away from it all. You shake your head no. Don't worry about it. Anyway, I'll let you get back to work. Every minute spent in your taxi is a minute lost. He gives you a smile, half ironic, half serious. You can count on me. He scratches at an invisible stain on the armrest. Yeah, I know, that's the problem. He smiles. Your boss opens the door and exits the cab. You watch him cross the street and enter the fleet garage. A couple of colleagues are milling about. Taxis are coming and going. They all ignore you, consciously or unconsciously. You are branded. You sit there a moment, then turn the key in the ignition. The hum of the engine sends a tingle down your spine. It's impossible to describe how you missed that feeling. It's back to the night shift, back to life. Despite the attack, despite it all. Alright, so now we actually get into the gameplay of things. So as you can see, we have a good amount of fuel. We've got full full tank of fuel. It is 10 o'clock. We have 327 euros, I believe that is. And we now have the opportunity to go to a variety of different places. Is that a cat? If that's a cat, we should probably go and save it. So let's go let's go to the first first fair right here. And uh, we're gonna obviously be listening to a couple of people's stories. All right, so her fare is 18 euro, 7.1 kilometers. Is that good? Oh, no. I'm actually terrible at this kind of thing because I really have no idea about taxi fares, obviously. I guess we'll, let, let's do it. Why not? The passenger gets into the cab and gives you her address. Her voice is muted, far away. You start up the cab. She appears rather meek, subdued, like she's about to fade away. You look up at her. She returns your gaze, but she's not there. It's as if you weren't looking at an actual person, but at a silhouette instead, in the shape of a human being. Hmm, yeah, so now we get a chance to ask her something, so I'll say everything all right? Your question surprises her. Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Her eyes in the rearview mirror tell another story. Mm, you seem preoccupied, or uh, I mean, music. Maybe we should, maybe we should play some music. Music. She pauses. I don't know. If you want. She breaks off again. What kind of music do you have? Whatever is on the radio. I never listen to the radio. I don't really know what's any good. Maybe... She seems to be weighing her options. Hmm. Uh, well, what do you think she's going to like? I, I assume classical. I, I would think classical from her outfit. Maybe jazz. Maybe she'd like jazz as well. Let's say classical. The young woman pauses uncertainly. Then... Fine. I rarely listen to classical. <laughs> oh, I'm a very good, very good uh, judge of people, aren't I? Right. You press the radio search button to find a classical station and land in the middle of a symphonic explosion. Ah, Marla. I can change stations if you want. I mean, if she knows that, if she knows that, come on. No, Marla's fine. I don't dislike it. There is a slight drawl to her voice, like an old tape played in slow motion. I listen to Marla on occasion. My parents love him. She is quiet for a moment. Marla, in my mind, is somehow associated with my thesis. Your thesis? Yes. Not another word. She turns her head slightly, as if thinking about something unpleasant. 
What's the subject? The progressive nuns of Ransay Abbey at the dawn of the industrial era. The air in the cab seems icy. I didn't quite get that. Sounds ve I'm, I'm going to say sounds very specific. Extremely. Too much so, no doubt. My field of research is terribly limited and... Well, how should I put it? She sighs. It's deadly boring, a subject that no one's interested in. My thesis supervisor for a start, my parents, my ex, and worst of all, even me. She stares at you. The subject is a trap. It's never been explored and it informs our perception of women in the 18th century. But no one is interested in it. That's how it goes. I got used to my thesis, to the subject. Doctoral theses are rarely interesting, you know. But mine, I think I've hit rock bottom. You shouldn't say that. I don't need your pity. She speaks in cool, clipped tones without any animosity. You find it disconcerting. I chose the path I'm on. I am entirely accountable for it. She hesitantly lifts a hand. But I'm the one who chose my thesis. Me and no one else. To be honest, it will no doubt be the only thing that remains of me when I die. What if you tried something new? Something new? Like what? I have no practical skills whatsoever. Do you know how to drive? She stares at you. As a matter of fact, yes, I do. Then you could drive a cab. A brief pause. I see what you are hinting at, but I don't think I'd be able to do it. I'm sure your job requires more than driving skills. I'm not very good with people. Well, I wasn't either at first. And then, day after day, I got to know people better, to understand them. It's something you learn. She lowers her eyes. I... I'd like to believe you. Taxi driver, it's just an example. There are dozens of jobs that don't require any particular skills, as you said. You have to give it a go. Try your luck. Talk a little more about yourself. Me, before I did this job, I thought I was no good for anything. Then someone gave me a chance, trained me, gave me... You break off. The young woman is visibly moved. Unshed tears glisten in the darkness of the cab. Sorry. Don't be. It's nothing. It's me. A wry smile tugs at the corner of her mouth, as if she enjoys the thought of seeing loathsome people suffer. My parents think... Her voice falters. She is unable to go on. It takes her a few seconds to pluck up the courage to speak again. My parents think I've made a mess of my life. I know they do. They haven't said so, of course. They are there for me, they help me, but deep down they know it's too late. The symphony on the radio takes a dramatic, tormented turn. I'm 28. I'm doing a doctoral thesis on 18th century nuns. My brothers went to top business schools and earned MBAs. They're married and have children. And me? I'm... Uh, I'm compiling pages and pages of, of information on nuns. You pull up to the passenger's address, an opulent-looking building in the 16th, 16th arrondissement. The young woman is perfectly still, seemingly paralyzed. I... I am very grateful to you for having tried to cheer me up. Without success, but I really appreciate your trying. A trace of a smile plays across her lips. You believe that everyone has a purpose in life. She shrugs. I don't. She hands you the fare, then exits the cab without a word. A moment later, she's walking away, heading towards her building. You sit there a moment longer, then start up the cab.
we receive 20 euros 41 and now we have a new fare so that is amazing <laughs> i i'm i i'm blown away okay because the writing is absolutely spectacular and it is not it is not all you know it's not all rosy you know bright kind of stories these stories are going to be impactful they are going to be filled with emotion they are going to be filled with drama and hugely exquisite storytelling and just to let you know some of these stories if not all of them are either based on truth or are actually true stories uh, at least that's what it said at the beginning of the game when I loaded it up. So take from that what you will. But I absolutely love this game. And if you'd like to see more, I am more than happy to play some more. I love this. I think it is fantastic. I don't think it is getting enough recognition on Steam. It is not getting enough people to check it out. And I'd highly recommend checking it out if you are a fan of narrative you know, sort of noir style games which have amazing stories to tell. And I mean, all of these people have all kinds of different stories. You never know who you're going to meet. There are, I believe, over 70 or about 70 passengers that you can take with you. And as a result, obviously, you're going to be trying to solve your attempted murder as well. And I think it is great. I really do. I'm not being sponsored, by the way. This is no sponsored video or anything like that. I am literally just playing this because it is fantastic. I love the premise of it. I love the, the stories. I love the fact that the city is actually pretty massive as well. And it is literally such a simple game, but so well done. And I'm going to stop gushing about it now. You either know whether you want to check it out or you don't. And if you'd like to see more, then let me know and I'll make another episode. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.